Welcome to the CMMC Readiness Series. My name is Darius Phillips. I am a certified CMMC assessor and CMMC provisional instructor. In this series, I am providing you guidance of the steps you need to take to satisfy your CMMC slash DFAR 7012 contractual requirements. So in this video, we are still focusing on CMMC level one, that self-assessment, and I will show you how to identify your assessment boundary. To do that, we're going to focus on creating a network diagram for your organization. Identify the boundary for where that federal contract information, FCI, is being processed, stored, or transmitted within your non-federal systems. Let's jump into it. Just to recap, in the first video of this series, we covered your asset inventory, identifying all the assets that you have in your organization. In video two, we focus on scoping your environment, identifying all systems that process, store, transmit federal contract information. So whether they're FCI assets out of scope or specialized assets. Now, just to reinforce that, that when you're factoring in the scope for your CMMC level one self-assessment, identifying the people, employees, vendors, partners, anyone that is going to be handling that FCI, they want to ensure that you include them in your level one assessment scope. In the technology, where are you storing it in cloud environment? Are you storing it on servers hosted at your headquarters location? on endpoints, mobile devices, they need to identify the technology where that FCI will be processed, stored, or transmitted. Facilities, where is that FCI being stored? In the scenario where you're printing out FCI, for example, where is that printer stored? Is that someone's home office? Is that the corporate office? What physical security controls do you have in place to protect the confidentiality of that federal contract information. Lastly, can't forget about those external service providers. Any external people, technology, or facilities. I know a lot of organizations, especially small businesses, rely on managed service providers or managed security service providers, external IT. If those external service providers have access to process, store, or transmit that federal contract information, then they are in scope for your CMMC level one self-assessment. You know, also think about the cloud service providers, for example, they're considered external service provider. Any entity that is outside of your organization categorize their assets that are processing, storing, or transmitting your federal contract information and make sure that you're assessing those in scope assets against the 15 NIST SPA Garner 171 requirements slash the FAR 21 requirements. So this is just a sample network diagram, just real high level, give you an idea, just kind of illustrating the boundaries. So we see we have our headquarters boundary, apps, third-party apps, and then also remote workers. So these represent boundaries. And then we're going to go a step further in the next network diagram to clearly identify where is that FCI flowing flow down requirements. But I do want to emphasize that for CMC level one, it does not require any documentation requirements. So you don't have to have necessarily documented policies, procedures, network diagram, SOPs, data flow diagrams. That's not required to complete your CMC level one self-assessment. However, it will be a challenge to accurately complete that self-assessment without having some form of documentation at a minimum, a network diagram, clearly identifying your boundaries and then also your asset inventory. Because remember the CMMC 2.0 proposed rule states that for CMMC level one self-assessment, there has to be a senior representative from the organization that will attest to compliance with those 15 security requirements for level one. That senior representative is going to be signing their name, submitting their self-attestation to the SPUR system, and you don't want to make any fraudulent claims to the Department of Defense, to the federal government. I wouldn't advise that. So having at least the basic documentation can potentially help make your position defensible if there is an issue 
or if your compliance with level one is called into question, you will have a better defensible position if you can point to the documentation that your organization reviewed in performing your annual CMC level one self-assessment. In that case, being better safe than sorry. <laughs> this CMC level one network diagram goes into more detail showing exactly where in the color yellow shows where federal contract information is flowing. So in this illustration, we see that we have the corporate user, so their endpoint. And in this scenario, the corporate user is issued a laptop by the organization. And on that laptop, they do have access to the Microsoft 365 environment, Office, Outlook, email, OneDrive, SharePoint, and federal contract information is flowing between that endpoint device and Microsoft 365. Anything in yellow is in scope to be assessed against all 15 R21 requirements. And then anything in purple, we're showing that, okay, there's no FCI flowing to, for example, Dropbox. So Dropbox would be categorized as out of scope. This organization is hosting a server on site if they're on their corporate network and it does not process store or transmit any FCI. So this server would be out of scope. We see that separation between the corporate network and the commercial cloud environment. And then over here, we have government equipment. In video number two of, in this series, we identify any government equipment. So equipment that is issued by the government, then it may process store transmit FCI or it may not. Regardless, any government equipment will be classified specified equipment in your asset inventory and will be out of scope for the CMC level one self-assessment. Therefore, the government equipment, in this case, this laptop would not be assessed against the 15 requirements. Only this endpoint device that the corporate users are using to access the commercial cloud environment. So the Microsoft 365 commercial, these are the two FCI assets or this network diagram. A network diagram does not have to be complex. It can be really straightforward, just kind of providing that illustration to clearly identify the boundaries for your CMC level one self-assessment. And I keep reiterating, you want to reduce the scope and you want to minimize where that federal contract information is flowing, who has access, what systems is being stored on. You want to minimize that, make sure that only those who are working on those in scope contracts and need access to that federal contract information has access. No more, no less. Think about that least privilege, need to know those are the principles you want to apply for protecting the confidentiality of your federal contract information. But that we want to avoid any non authorized users from having access to FCI. Once that happens, now the confidentiality of the FCI has been breached. Whether intentional or non intentional, you know, it's still one to protect that confidentiality of FCI. As with all of these presentations, I share the full presentation in the CMMC proof LinkedIn groups. Highly encourage you to join that groups and get access to just collaborate with other CMMC professionals and defense contractors who are in various stages of their CMMC readiness journey. And then also to get access to all of the materials that I share during these videos. You could take something like this network diagram template and that can be a starting point for you to complete yours. My gift from me to you is these different templates and diagrams that I'll be sharing throughout this entire video series to help build your arsenal. To also need to conquer CMMC, CMMC proof. Speaking of arsenal, these are just the resources, links to the CMMC level one self-assessment guide, link to the private LinkedIn group. CIS 18 is where you can find a variety of templates and resources, but specifically the asset inventory template that I share with you in the first video in this series. And then also there's a direct link to the CMMC level two reading this video series that would stick with us. We're early in the crawl stages of CMMC readiness. We're starting off by focusing on level one. Aspire Cyber's mission is to make CMMC cybersecurity compliance easy for you. Our approach is to segment it and get those easy wins, get some momentum going, those early foundational steps in first. You don't want to skip through. You don't want to jump 
around in this video series. Make sure that you're following the chronological order of this series. I'm very intentional and strategic about the order of these videos to make sure that you don't miss a step. If you like more guidance on completing your CMOC level one, Aspire Cyber is offering a four week boot camp, two hours each session. We deep dive into each of these areas to make sure your organization has all of the guidance and resources that it needs to accurately complete your CMMC level one self-assessment. Here's my contact information, inspirecyber.com, but yeah, fastest response you'll get if you contact me at dphillips at aspirecyber.com. I'm here to help.